Okay, here we go. The record is on. So at least now I have uh, three issues to go to before we begin. So let us take a look at the uh, here. This is the uh, description of the uh, level that we are uh, going to use to grade your work. So let's take a look at this. Uh, we are now uh, working on this, um, the, the floor plan with the gravity load system in mind, right? So let's say level one, you can summarize relevant gravity load and recognize tributary area and width of a simple uh, system or, you know, that's not a uh, more complicated system. So that's an uh, area of uh, copy and paste. Okay, so that's 40%. That's 40%. Meaning when you do this, if you get this right, you know, free body diagram like this one. Okay, you see that? Or this one with the correct load. This one, for example, with the correct load. That is uh, when you should have, um, maybe I should close it right here and try to use a different color so that you can recognize it. 40%, if you can get this correctly, okay? Or, no, I, think you, I think you get the idea, or this here. If you get the free body diagram with all the load correct, that's 40%. That means you got to get the, uh, all the uniform loads and the, and the point loads correct with the numbers. That's 40%. And we don't even begin uh, our work just yet, right? It's just a summation, You're just doing some, check some tributary area and some sum the load. 40% meaning if you get to this point, you are just, at the, the level right at your nose, you are about to drown or not. It's the F level, so to speak. If, if you can only do this, you are right at the, uh, say, threshold of passing. Uh, you, 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 you are about pass but you, and, and you don't fail, but you, it's not thing to be satisfactory about either, okay? Because it's 40%. And then when we look at this, now the, uh, Shear force and bending moment diagram will uh, give you uh, the rest, 60%. So I'd say it's about shear force diagram about 20% because it's easier and bending moment diagram is uh, 40%. So when we come back here and you see, if you get uh, just this one, shear force diagram, which is a piece of cake, that's uh, 20%. And if you can correct, um, if you can get all the correct bending moment diagram, that's uh, forty percent more. So when when you get to this point, that's when you get a uh, hundred percent. Okay, I I can grade the um, the uh, beam separately, meaning if you if you mess up B one, but you when you do B two correctly, you may get one hundred percent at B two, but not at B one. But chances are you will need to have the load coming from a simple system to act on a more complicated system anyway. So like this, like this B3, you have the reaction from, from another beam, right? So if you, if you mess up the beam before, chances are for the complicated level, you're gonna fail because the, the load here is not correct. So you better be careful, especially you know when we begin with a simple system like this, this is simple system, right? If you get this right, you get the load right. If you get this wrong, you get the load wrong, and then the 40%, you know, you, you, you're gonna be stopped here because if your free body diagram is incorrect, there's no point checking the shear force and bending moment diagram, okay? Is there any question about this? Perhaps not, okay? Now let's move on to uh, the very popular question here. Let's say, please keep in mind that uh, you cannot analyze this just yet, okay? So let me uh, try to summarize this for you. Generally, um, you can count how many reactions you have, right? One, two, 
three, four, five, and six. You have six reactions. But you can only have three equilibrium equations. You can, you can never have more than that, right? So that means you are three equations short for solving this problem, meaning you're gonna have to find three extra equations are needed. We're gonna come back and talk about this later on. This is what we call degree of redundancy. You need to find three more extra equations. And one, once you have six equations and you have six unknowns, the problems or the problem becomes solvable. Okay. Now, uh, as we discussed a little bit before, that generally we it's a beam. You can write like this because we, we only care about the vertical load, correct? But we cannot. We have to provide the horizontal um, stability for our structure as well, even though we know that we don't have the horizontal load. It's just the way of engineering. Even though you know that you're not gonna uh, have any horizontal load for your beam to support, you need to write your free body diagram such that it is always under equilibrium regardless of what is going to happen, okay? Because let's say, if we don't consider the load, this is the beam that you should always run because you never know, you may have to take the load like that. It, so it's not thing to say that, oh, we're not gonna write the hinge here unless we have the load like this. You should always have the structure ready for the load, any load, okay? So now it comes down to this. When you have more than one support, like this case, you still need one horizontal reaction, correct? To hold your system in place. You don't need to have a hinge everywhere. Just one hinge will be enough to provide the horizontal restraint in case you have any horizontal load. So, that means in the end, it doesn't matter where you really want to write your, your uh, triangle. You can write it here, 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 or you can write it here. anywhere you like. But I suppose for typical engineering uh, practice, we tend to write on, on, on the extreme left or extreme right because nobody want to mess it in the middle. And just to make sure that, okay, we write a proper free body diagram that has the horizontal restraint. So it doesn't matter where you write it, as long as you have one. But when you write something like this, now this is different, but it's different in a very complex way. Can you, can you feel that when you look at the beam like this and the beam like this, when you look at these two beams, they are not the same. Do you feel different about them? Tell me, tell me what you feel. If, if you wanna just develop your thinking system, there is no right, no wrong. You can say they are the same. You can say they are different. I say both answers are correct. Hit that, right? How can we have two different answers that are both correct. Oh, well, 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 it depends on, on, on circumstances, I'd say. So would you like to discuss about this? But uh, maybe not. I will, I will um, come back to this uh, later on, very, very later. Now another question. I need to go back to this. Uh, your friend asked me why we don't uh, write the, uh, <clears throat> The, uh, okay, the, this, this picture is too messy. So let, let, let us look at the, pic, uh, the, the example number two right away, okay? And I'll try to explain uh, another question, okay? So let's say when, when you look at this, 
B3. You know that your free body diagram is going to look like this. Now we don't have the issue with the circle or rectangle anymore, right? And when we calculate, we're going to get the reactions, right? So that's your B3. Okay. Now, your, your friend's question would be, why don't we write this red reaction on B5, right? So let me go ahead and write the free body diagram of B5. If you are going to write the reaction of B3, you're going to have to write it here. Correct? Am I correct? Nobody's talking to me at all. I, I, I was supposed to be sick, you know? I was supposed to be healthy, and I'm, I'm the one who looks very healthy now. If, if you are going to write the reaction of B3 on B5, it's supposed to look like that. Am I correct? Do you agree with me so far? Hello? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes, right? So before messing this picture up anymore, let me, uh, yeah, I can, I can erase later. Let me draw another B. Simple B. And then I place the load like this on your B. What does this, this load do to this B? Now we are looking at this picture, this free body diagram. What does this blue load do to this beam? Can anyone answer? Would anyone like to try? Hello? What does it do? What does the load do to the beam? Okay. So if you want to count, if you want to analyze this beam, okay, what's the reaction? Oh, oh we have the answer from the chat. Nothing. The end, uh, your friend says nothing. What about? What about uh, you, other students? Do you agree with your, uh, one of your friends? I should uh, say his name, Mr. Chalom Zak. He says nothing. Do you think he's correct? Oh, cool. Well, 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 please talk to me. Hello? Don't let me scream here alone in the house. My kids should think I'm crazy. Hello? I, I think no. You think no, so we have two answers. I should be satisfied with that, right? I got, I got two students talking to me. I should be very, 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 very happy. I guess you two are right. Because, you know, this load acts right on the support. That means the reaction here must be exactly the same as the load. We can say that this is Concentric, right? Can you recall when you write your free body diagram of a dot and then you have the force? It's exactly like that. So when the when the two when the load becomes concentric like this, it just like it doesn't do anything to your beam because that means this blue point load will not create neither shear nor bending moment on the beam at all because it's concentric and this react, this red reaction is gonna be exactly the same as this blue load. And right here, we have zero reaction. It becomes troublesome only when, you know, you begin to have the load acting here, there and everywhere on your beam, right? That, that, when, that when you must start the analysis on your beam. And that's one answer. And when you look at, at another answer, okay, I'm going to try to write the uh, 3D picture and try to see if I can do it. Let's hope so. 
Now, if I write the three, uh, maybe uh, 3D yeah, of uh, the four plan, that's your B3. It should be in dark blue. If that's your B3, okay? Um, your B3 will have the reaction, right? B3. And then you know you have your B5 actually coming in here. All right? So when the reaction of B3 here, B5 is gonna have its own reaction here as well, right? But look, look, look what this is about. This point is actually the column, right? Do you have the column there? It's a column. So I think another answer is that, you know, these two beams successfully bring the gravity load of the floor to the columns. So when the load is right at the column, that means it is ready to go down to the foundation. So the reaction of B3 is in fact, right where the column is. So it just have to go straight down into the column. Unlike B2, where you must know that when you look at B2 here, what supports B2? It's B3, right? So now if you look at the B2 and write the free body diagram of B2, and you have the reaction. You need to find the place for the reaction of B2, which in fact will be B3. So this will be on B3. But B3 itself is supported by the two columns. So your reactions are ready to go down to the foundation. Okay, so does this answer your question? Yes, yes. Okay, so I think we are pretty good to go then. So we have, we have uh, discussed a little bit about problem number two or exercise number two, example number two, whatever you want to call it. So I think it's a good time that we begin. Okay, um, I think another thing that um, students uh, tend to ask me uh, from the active session is that, how do we begin? So I, I, I say we begin by taking a look at the entire system and trying to find the support for everyone, okay? So if, if you wanna take notes, I'm gonna give you a minute or two to, to take notes on this because I'm gonna erase all of them and, and start my work on, on, on this floor plan, okay? Let's, see, is, let's give you guys a minute or two if you wanna take notes. I'm trying to look for, okay, got it. Um, I'm trying to uh, change the direction of the wind just blows into my head and um, begin to have a headache. Okay. So you guys ready? A any more questions? Please, you know, I, I always insist that the, the worst question is the question that you keep to yourself. Don't be afraid to ask questions thinking that somebody may think that, oh, your question is so silly. I already know that. It, it, it doesn't matter if anyone else knows the answer, but if you don't know the answer to that question, you better ask, okay? So I suppose no question, yes, no? Okay, so I'm, is it okay that I'm gonna erase everything now? Hello? Okay. It's kind of a nice picture, but I think I need the space in the video anyway.
Okay, so when you look at the floor plan, I think the first thing is to try to see if every beam will have the support. Okay. So before you do anything, you can just start looking at the plan and try to find support for everything. So let's say B1. We begin with B1, all right? B1. B1 here, go straight to the column. So that's no problem. But then you have a series of B1 here and here and here that do not lie on the support or on, on the direct support such as columns. So that means this B1, B1 to B5, okay? So that means this B1, this B1, and then this B1 would have to be supported by B4, right? Do you agree? And uh, we have discussed a little bit about this. And this is B2, 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 B2. These four B2s will have to be supported by B3. Okay. <clears throat> and then you have this B4, uh, B2, I'm sorry. This B2 go directly, goes directly into the column. So you're fine. B3 will directly support B2, and then B3 itself will go directly into the column. So that is also done. But now we have B1, another B1 here. This B1 is out of the uh, column area, so it has to be supported by B4 right here. But then B4 is a slight problem because I'm such a tricky person, you know? B4, when you look at B4, this part, which is a cantilever, will have to support B1, this B1, right? This B1 has to have support, so it has to be supported by this B4, C. I use C to indicate that it's a cantilever. So now I can find the supports for every B1 that I have, but look at B4. B4 has one column, but your beam has to have two supports, correct? So it has to have another support. Now, for those who cannot see the system may get confused and think that some of these beams may support B4. But when you look at these B1s, when you look at these B1s, they don't have the support themselves. So they have to be supported by B4. So you cannot use B1 to support B4 because B1 themselves don't have support. B4, in turn, we have to support B1. And then, again, B4 only has one direct support at the column, meaning we have to give another support to B4 coming from this B5C. So when you look at this, B5 here is supposedly the most difficult one because it has to carry the floor on both sides with, you see, unequal space. On the left, uh, I can, yeah, try to use different color. On the left, it has to carry this floor, right? Let's look carefully. On the left, it has to carry this floor. On the right, it carries only this much. And then it has its own self weight. And then most importantly, it has to carry B4 as well. So now, after you all see this, we now can find the supports for B1. B2, B3, B3 is between the beams, uh, between the columns, so they're fine. B4 and then B5. But now we can see the entire system. We can find the supports for everyone. The calculation should be straightforward. Okay, so are you with me now? Do you have any question? Hello? Okay. To really look at the chat. No club? No club. Okay. So that means everything is 
It's too clear. And we're ready to move on, right? Uh, I have uh, 20 minutes before the next break. So I suppose at least we can finish uh, B1, B2, or maybe B3 as well. Okay, so let, let us begin, shall we? I need to erase this a little bit. Okay, so you may, I, I think I may do well and uh, help you understand things better if I try to write the, the um, tributary width on the B. Okay, so let's, uh, let's take a look at the typical B1, okay? Any B1, let's say uh, we are gonna focus on this, okay, B1. If we look at this, the tributary width on the left will be half of this. And on the right will be half of this. So this becomes the tributary width and area that each B1 will have to be responsible for. And now you take a look at this. Uh, this is the symbol that you guys should know, right? So add symbol, we indicate spacing, meaning um, this is each is 160. So if each is 160, you should know that half is, you know, this becomes um, 0.8. On the left and then 0.8 on the right. And then you should uh, realize right away that in fact the tributary width is generally equal to the spacing, right? Can you believe that some students will get very, very confused and mess this up? So now we know that yeah, the tributary width for B1 uh, is in fact. 1.6 meters. So we can now write the free body diagram of B1. Um, please include all the relevant information such as the length, eight meters, and all the load and all the spans. Now this is going to be 1.6 multiplied by the date load plus life load. You can see that it's 400 plus 500 and then self weight 300. Okay. I don't have the calculator with me. Uh, I, I, you know, I always come empty handed. So if you could help me out, I'm going to use the iPhone. It's uh, 900 multiplied by 1.6. It's 1440 plus 300. So that's 1740 kilogram per meter. Okay? Any question? Pretty straightforward, right? And again, when you're up to this point, you should use different color like this. If you, if you get this, you already have 40% according to our rubric, okay? Now, if it's all quiet, you know, please don't spend too much time on this, okay? Because you know, shear force diagram is, don't mess it up. And bending moment diagram is that. Okay, and of course you should know that this is uh, WL over two, and this height is of course WL square over eight. It should take just less than a minute to complete this. So this becomes one seven four zero multiplied by eight over two, or in fact multiplied by four. Right? How much is that? So it's uh, 6960 kilogram force. 
Well, this is one seven four zero eight square over eight. That goes like that. So you just multiply that by two again. So your moment is thirteen hundred nine. Sorry, thirteen thousand nine hundred and twenty kilogram uh, meter. Okay. See, simple beam takes like less than a minute. To do it, and I'm not doing this to discourage you. I'm doing this to encourage you that this is what you need to be able to do. This is what you should be able to do. Okay. So we're done with B1. Any question? Remember that we are going to have to place this um, different color again. Reaction on B4. So you better get it correct. And it will be very, very sad because I believe everybody knows that this is easy. But when you need to perform, somehow, you know, sometimes, just mess it up. Okay, so we can move on to B2 now, I suppose. B2, the free body diagram is pretty similar to uh, what we have for B1, I think. It's a simple B2. Oh, you know what? I should write B1 here. Mm -hmm. B2. B2 is uh, 5.6 meters long. And it takes this uniform load. And when you look at this, do you want me to write the area like this again? If it is similar. Yes or no? Ah. <sighs> Yes. Okay. At least there's there's some points. Okay. I'm going to erase this because I was going to do it anyway. So you see, if you take a look at uh, one beam, B2, let's say this one. So now you know this B2 will carry half of the floor on its left and another half on the right. So that becomes its tributary with an area, right? And again, um, if the spacing here is, you know, like the, like indicated here is 1.2, right here on the left half is 0.6, half of that spacing. On the right is also another half, so in the end, yeah, it is 1.2, okay? So here is 1.2 multiplied by uh, 400 plus 500 like that, and then with the self weight, okay? That's about how much? Hey, you, you guys should uh, try to punch calculator while I'm working as well. Just maybe I'm a human being. I could be wrong as well. Just, uh, let's help each other out. So that is 1380 kilogram per meter. Do you get the same number? Yes. Yeah, good. Yes. Okay, good, thanks. Uh, thanks everyone. Let, let, let's go together, okay? So again, it's a, it's a repetition because you now know that the shear force diagram is gonna look like this. And the bending moment diagram is gonna look like that. No, this is a gimmick. And this can WL over two. This height is WL square over eight. This is one three eight zero uh, multiplied by five point six over two. Now be mindful that we change the beam, so the, the little thing is different. This is one three eight zero uh, five point six square over eight. So for this, 
um, basically it's uh, so that's uh three eight six four kilogram force and here it's a uh, five four and ten that's enough for my significant figures okay you may think yeah i should write five four zero nine point six yeah so what i'm going to write five four ten okay so now we have b2 see very quickly i i said um that oh we have 20 minutes before the break right and then we started working on this at uh, exactly 10 uh, a.m now 10 minutes gone by we finished two beams already and we could go faster even if we have to write you know so you see it's perfectly possible for you to work quickly and again maybe i should uh, write it down here and um you finish the free body diagram, that's 40%. Shear force diagram and value, it's 20% uh, here. Pardon me for the mess on the right. I, I don't know where it comes from. Because I, I remember when I when I created this, uh, it, it wasn't there. But anyway. And 40% for the uh, bending moment diagram, because it, it, it's more work on bending moment diagram. So likewise here, that's a forty percent, twenty, and forty. Okay, is there any question? No. Okay. So uh, we still have a lot of minutes left. So let us move to B3. So before we do that, let's, let's go back up to see what B3 is like. Now you have to be very careful. Then again, silly mistakes just around the corner. When you make silly mistakes, stupid mistakes, that doesn't mean that you're stupid. But what, what you committed was quite stupid you know, at the time. Maybe because you didn't have enough sleep. Maybe you were concerned about some other things. Whatever. So you, you, need, you need to keep your concentration high. Remember, this stuff is not difficult. Sometimes it's all about your concentration. So when you look at B3 now, yeah, that's B. So you, 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 you should do well to try to count how many B2 you actually have. Now we're gonna have like how many? One and two and three and four and five. Right? But five that's there on the support, so it doesn't count. So that means our free body diagram for B3 is going to be, yeah, like this. Okay, and then I'll try to put the reaction from D2 equally. Ha, huh, beautiful, isn't it? So some, someone may get, oh, uh, B2 more here. If you write like that, I, 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 will, I will not say that you are wrong, but if you are a little bit concerned or confused and want to include another B2 here, you're gonna end up messing your diagram if you don't understand what is actually that you do okay so we now uh know that uh this is three eight six four all of them You may want to choose to write this as a P, you know? You can say, okay, it's P, 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 and P. And then you write somewhere here that P is equal to 3864. It's up to you. Okay? So remove that. Otherwise, it's too much. Are we done with B3? Are we or are we not? Okay. 
No, remember. No uniform remember. load. Yes, we have the weight of the beam, uniform load, which is 300 kilogram per meter. It's going to be very, very sad if you forget this, right? It's easy, it's there, it's very straightforward, and yet sometimes people forget. So that's why I, I keep saying you need to have good focus and you need to have a healthy mind in the exam, especially. Generally, you know, students your age tend to study very, very hard at night and for go to sleep. But some subjects don't work like that. You know, it, it, they work better when you have more energy and freshness about you. It's not about studying hard because here you don't need to study for anything. It's pretty straightforward, right? Okay, so that's B3. And if you get to this point, of course, that's 40%. And now you're beginning to know that if you get the reaction from B2 wrong, your B3 will be stopped short here. You will not pass 40% mark. You may get like 10% for recognizing the, the uniform load and that's it. And be careful. Um, it's six meters, right? Be careful with, because I've seen all kinds of error. Here is six meter. And you see, it's, it, it's gonna have the relationship with this because right here, your tributary width is 1.2 meters. So this better be equal to your tributary width, right? So it is 1.2 uh, meters. Now we have that. So you think you're gonna have a problem calculating reactions? I find it, uh, you know, it becomes troublesome for some students. But when you see a situation like this, is B3 symmetric? Is it symmetric? Can anyone answer that? Do you know what's yes. yes. Yes, it is. So when you have a symmetric situation, it means that there are some things that you can easily take advantage because you know that the reactions are gonna be equal on both sides, right? That's the first one. Am I right? If, yes. If, yeah, if it's symmetric, it means you can split everything in half. So again, that means I can easily calculate the reaction here. Because if, if everything splits in half, it means that I have 3864 multiplied by two, right? Because the left would take two point loads, the right would take two plus 300. That's the uh, uniform load multiplied by three. That's my reaction. Do I really need to take moment? Perhaps not, right? So we are here in three, eight, six, four, multiplied by two, and plus uh, it's a 900, right? So it is eight, six, two, eight. You may want to work with this number to get the, 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 the precise uh, shear force and bending moment diagram, but you may want to write down like, Eight six three. Okay. So before we, we begin the uh, shear force and bending moment diagram, I think it's a uh, high time that we take a ten minute break. So any question before we take a break? Oh, professor, no. I have a question. Yes, please. Oh, like in the exam, when we write our calculation, do we need to start with like a sigma if f equal to zero, like equilibrium equation, or we can just write like how we did? Oh, actually, you know, I'm not a person who mind that kind of thing very much. You you can tell by the way I write, right? Yes. So you don't you don't need to do that as long as you get the final numbers correct. 
follow. Yeah, but you know that that is a pain when you don't show anything. Suppose because some students would you know coming into my class once I say that because this is you you're not the first one who asked something like that. I said you don't you don't need to show anything. When when I ask you to draw the shear force and when moment diagram, they, they would ask. Do we, do we need to, to show the calculation? I said, no. And then here come just the diagram. And then if something is wrong and I cannot backtrack the calculation, I'm just gonna <laughs> Okay, so no, um, I think that that's a huge difference coming from the basic classes like statics or mechanics of materials because you really need to grasp the idea of equilibrium. That's why you, you have been asked to write proper equations. But for me, this is uh, the beginning of the advanced class. You should have those basics stored within you already. So you don't need to show me that you have the proper basics. I don't need your basics anymore. I need your advanced calculation, okay? Okay, thank, thank you, Professor. Cheers, cheers. All right, so uh, I'm going to stop the record.